Greetings fellow YouTubers, this is Hunt Ionex, and today is that time of the year again where we count down my top 10 favorite figures I bought of last year of 2023. And man, did I did I buy a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed, a little shocked. I don't want to make jokes, I don't want to make people feel bad. Man, I bought I bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, one key thing to note is usually this is usual with this list, it's always figures that I bought. Not that they came out, although there's a lot that came out this year. It's all mainly stuff that I bought. And two, it is my list. You maybe have a different opinion than mine, and that's the whole point of the comment section, for you to make your own top 10 list and tell me. So, of course, these are the honorable mentions, as always. Just the stuff that didn't quite make it there because of one little thing or the other, or even just because, you know, the time didn't line up or I didn't like them as much as I like the ones that are actually on the list. So without any further ado, now with the rules and everything shown off that the honorable mentions out of the way, it's time to move on to the list itself. Starting off at number 10, we have DC Multiverse Captain Atom. It's a really good figure. I made a whole review about it. It's got its Typical McFarlane Toys problems, which does bring it down, which is why he's pretty low on the list. But overall, it's a really solid figure. Ah, love it. He's not... None of the DC Multiverse figures I've bought have D, the McFarlane Toys Ida, which was, like, I think pretty high on one of my lists when the first time I did one of these. So, no one's quite beat that quality, but we've got, we've got some contenders. But overall, pretty solid figure. Really like it. And it's why he's made the list. At number nine, we have Transformers Rise of the Beast Mainline Optimus Prime. This is this one's really good. A lot of people are going crazy for the Studio Series 2 Cray. Easy for it, honestly. You do not need to be <laughs> paying that much for it on the aftermarket. Do not. But plus, this one is really good. That's why it's made the list. It doesn't it's got its flaws. I feel like the arm kibble should kind of close in a little better. And I think the abundance of the gray plastic is a little much. But overall, it's a really solid figure that I honestly kind of think looks even a little better than the Studio Series one. I don't know. Call me crazy. But I probably am. But overall, Rise of the Beast Optimus makes number nine. Just a really solid figure. Really good Transformer. And it's why he made the list. And at number eight, we have Gundam Mobile Breaker Battlelog Command Quanta. I already reviewed this kit, and it's a really solid mo model kit. A lot of great articulation, especially, I mean, it's a double O Gundam kit. You kind of expect it. It's a great kit. I had a lot of fun putting it together. I had a lot of fun painting the inner frame and stuff like that. Not the inner frame, the, psych the uh, GN drives on the inside. And there's still a lot of stuff I need to do with it, but overall, it's just a really, really good kit. It's a fun kit to build. It's great and easy for beginners. It's easy to find. Well, not really easy to find, but you get what I mean. It's a great, it's a great, great kit. And it absolutely deserved on to be on this list because I just really, I really like the thing. I don't know. It's probably my favorite Gundam I built this year. And at number seven, we have an old figure on the list. This is this is an old figure I bought this year that I have not stopped messing with. This is a McFarland Toys Master Chief. When I say McFarland Toys used to be really good, and it's why you still have collectors of the line like me, this is what I mean. The McFarland Halo stuff is just built differently. They're fun. They're so articulated. The only, like, McFarlane issue you can really find on these are the, the hips. You see how they're all broken up? That's really ugly looking. That is the only McFarlane quirk you can find on these ones. And these are just from the Halo 3 ones. When you get to the Halo 4 and 5 ones, that completely disappears. And they become borderline import figures with the quality and look of them. They are just phenomenal figures and it makes me genuinely so sad that McFarlane Toys other stuff isn't like these because this chief is awesome and everyone needs at least a couple of these in their collection I know I have a couple and plan to get more so yeah at number seven it is the McFarlane Toys Master Chief 
At number six, we have G.I. Joe Classified Dusty. This is a really solid figure. G.I. Joe is absolutely killing it. And there's so many more I want to get. So many more or out there. But Dusty was one I picked up this year. And I just I just cannot stop messing with it. This thing is great. The poses you can get this guy in are insane. He can do a full splits. Okay, not not even not even any Hasbro Spider Man I own can do that. Like it is a really impressive figure with so much great range of motion, so much great sculpt work and paint work. G.I. Joe is just awesome right now uh, with their figures. And this this one's a key example and is just one I've messed with all this year. Fantastic figure at number six, classified Dusty. And at number five, we have the only Marvel Legends to make it to the list. Marvel Legends Infinity Saga Captain America from Infinity War. This figure just really impressed me. The likeness is awesome. The paint and sculpt work on this is really good. And it, yeah, is using parts from an older figure. Absolutely. But I really like that older figure. So I don't mind it all that much. And it's, it's just a really solid figure. It's so much fun to pick up and pose. This is what Legends needs to be more of. It needs to be what G.I. Joe is doing with their articulation and sculpt work. Like this. This shows me they can do it. They just got to put in the effort. And the team... I, I love the team at Marvel Legends. But they're just not... They need to step it up, put it on par with everything else that's coming out from Hasbro. But yeah, Steve here absolutely rocked it. Gives me hope that Marvel Legends could be better if they just put in some effort. It's a really, really solid figure. It even reminds me of the older days when they were kicking it because it is based off an older mold. So yeah, number five, Captain America. And at number four, we have a figure that shocked the six inch collecting community as a whole with the Jada toys, Street Fighter 2, Fei Long. This guy and the other Street Fighter figures are awesome. After I got this guy in hand, I could not stop messing with it. I knew the second I got him in hand, he was going to make this list. And the second I saw it, I knew he was gonna make this list. It's an absolutely fantastic figure. This thing's got a lot of range of motion for a domestic American produced action figure. This guy's more poseable than any Hasbro figure or even Japanese import figure I've messed with. And it's made by the same guys who make die cast toy cars. <laughs> like it is mind blowing how awesome this figure is and the other figures in the line as well. I'm not the biggest Street Fighter guy, but God, I want to learn about the lore and the universe of the franchise and start collecting these figures left and right and that's how you know a good toy line is good when you can buy a figure from it that you've never you've had no interest in the series ever before but you buy a figure from it because it looks cool and now you're a fan you're hooked you want to know more that's the sign of a good action figure right there and Fei Lung is absolutely that good action figure which is why he's made the list at number four And at number three is one of the very few Dragon Ball figures I bought this year. Dragon Ball Evolve Vegito. This thing is awesome. It is so fun to just pick up and pose and mess around with. It is basically a $10 SH figure. It's, that's what it feels like. It's what it moves like. It's so good. Such a nice quality figure. If you have not messed with any of the Dragon Ball Evolve figures or similar sized anime figures made by Bandai America at this size, what are you doing? These things are incredibly fun to pick up and pose, just mess with and handle, and they look great as well. Just an absolute blast. Him and Gogeta are like my two favorite designs. The Fusions are my favorite designs in Dragon Ball, and I had to have them in Dragon Ball Evolve because they are just such fun designs and figures. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm already thinking of several other poses I want to put him in right now just by looking at him. So at number three... It is Dragon Ball Evolve Vegito. And at number two, we have a figure I was not expecting to find or even get this year. We have Gundam Universe Barbados Lupus Rex. This thing is incredible. Gundam Universe is a line I've always been a little iffy on. They've got some good figures, but a lot of their stuff is just really tight. It's not great in the range of articulation. It's very limited. 
But my God, this thing changed my opinion on the line around so quickly. This thing is incredible. I want to do a whole review on it very soon, so I'm not going to get my full thoughts in there. But my gosh, this thing is incredible what you can do with it. The range of motion. And this is the first one I've had where the joints are normal. They're not squeaky and tight. They're not floppy and loose. They are just the right range of ten denseness just nice range and motion everything this thing absolutely kills it it is so so good it's probably my favorite gundam thing i bought this year besides the command quant answer but man man oh man so 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 good so yeah number two gundam barbados lupus rex <laughs> And at number one is a figure I'm pretty sure is on a lot of people's number one figure of the year list. SH Figure Arts, Spider-Man, No Way Home, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. This thing is incredible. It's fun to pick up and mess with. The paintwork on it is spectacular. It looks great. The likenesses to Tobey Maguire are so much better in person than they were in prototype form. My god, this thing is just incredible. It looks good. It's so fun to pose. My only real concern with it is I don't know how well the joints are going to hold up because it's SH Figure Arts joints, which are usually pretty tight on a figure that is really thin. So, uh, hoping for the best. I have, I have my SH Figure Arts body coon who made the list last year. Not last year, a year before that. And his joints are still holding up. So, maybe, maybe his will hold up as well. I don't know. I'm praying for it, though, because I love messing with this figure. This thing is so fun, so good. I had to put him at number one. He's easily going to make it. It's well worth the money. Mm, man. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm already wanting to pick up and mess with it right now. Well, there you guys have it. Another year has passed, and another list of figures has been made. The top 10 figures of 2023. I had a lot of great stuff this year. I always feel a little bad making these because, you know, I, I get a lot of stuff. But overall, I really, really wanted to show these because the stuff I got is really good. The, the stuff I really wanted to talk about and not everything I get to buy, I end up reviewing because I'm behind on it or it's an older figure that's not going to get a lot of views. So the top 10 list gives me an excuse to finally talk about that. So overall, Man, the figures I had on this list were just really good choices. So many other ones I could have put on this list, but overall, it's just such a such a nice list of guys. So, so if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe, check out my other videos, as well as my social medias in the description down below. Comment down below your top 10 figures of the year. And until next time, you guys, peace.